Hi, everyone. I have some platform sneakers on. I'm so used to pushing the microphone down, so I can reach it this time. Um, well, thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to share about just my journey and also what we can look forward to for the future of food and young people. Now, everything with my journey really started in the summer of 2009 when my carefree days lounging by the pool and playing with my sister, eating endless amounts of watermelon, was unfortunately disrupted by a diagnosis that changed my life forever. This year, my dad was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and being an eight-year-old at the time, I couldn't really uh, capture the entire idea. It was scary, but I also didn't really know why. I knew that when I sat in the back seat of the car on the way home and my mom read off the side effects of the medication that the doctor had prescribed for him, something was very wrong. With side effects like internal bleeding, rashes, diarrhea, and even death, I was extremely terrified for him, and I didn't understand how a doctor could prescribe something that could potentially lead to all of these side effects and even other chronic illnesses. So with this confusion and honestly terror, I didn't really know what to do, but as most kids do they kind of just let things go and continue on with their day and that's pretty much what happened to me. It kind of lingered in the back of my mind but I didn't really really register how impactful it would be in my life until my mom started to talk about it at home. She started to discuss things about the food system and how important it is to eat organic or to eat more vegetables and coming from a very, very Jamaican family, this was all new news to us. We love our curry goat and our oxtail and vegetables were often the side dish and so hearing all of this really piqued my interest because I'm a foodie at heart but I also really, really didn't want my dad to experience anything horrible from that medication. So that's when my mom really included me and my little sister in twisting up our favorite meals, making lettuce wraps, curry lettuce wraps instead of curry goat with heavy sauces and white rice, or getting to watch food documentaries together, the classics like Food Inc. and Forks Over Knives. And throughout this process, as an eight-year-old, I was shocked and felt very betrayed. I felt like <laughs> My entire existence within food was totally a lie, and I couldn't stand to see my classmates go through the same thing as well. As we learned and my dad got better, I started taking this information outside of my home and into my school. Oftentimes, I would accidentally scare children by, you know, saying like, put down the potato chips or you're going to die, and, you know, that never works. <laughs> um, so I was confused why none of my classmates knew about factory farming or red food labels. I was confused why this wasn't a mandatory thing in schools. And as I continued to learn through my family's experience and eventually we were able to actually reverse my dad's type 2 diabetes without medication but these healthy lifestyle choices and changes. And seeing the power of food through this entire experience and how we can truly uh, look to what has been the cause of these illnesses to be the cure as well was so profound to me. And again, I'm eight, so I was really just trying to figure out how can I share this information with my peers without being that weird girl who's yelling at kids with potato chips or chicken nuggets and pizza. And that's when I really had to sit down with my mom and my family, and they actually took my passion for food and healthy eating very seriously. They included me in the conversation to begin with, but they also made sure that I was educated on how I could potentially take this little spark and make it into a bigger thing. So with that, my mom and I did a lot of research online about how I could potentially put my voice out there in a productive way. And we found an organization called the Alliance for a Healthier Generation that at the time was providing youth to join their youth advisory board and get the opportunity to speak in their communities, sh do healthy cooking demos and host events. And I was so pumped because I finally had an outlet to really share my passion. And luckily, I applied and was able to join the board representing the state of Arizona. And I feel like this moment of joining the Alliance was truly everything that launched my now career. 
from this moment, I got the opportunity to be in spaces and places that I could only dream of, being the youngest speaker at the Partnership for a Healthier America Summit back in 2010, and getting to share my perspective, but seeing how adults actually validated it and appreciated it was such an incredible moment for me. And it also made me think about how it wasn't just me or my voice that they valued and needed, but they also need other youth voices. And so from that moment on, I was determined to represent my generation in the food space. And I'm so grateful for the opportunities that I've been able to have to spread my message, like going on the Food Network and meeting and introducing First Lady Michelle Obama at several events and getting to do just crazy stuff like cook on the Today Show or um, go on red carpets and things that I really, really did not expect, all because of this passion for food. And through this journey, it was it was something that was humbling, but I also felt like it was something that could easily um, lose traction. I felt like I needed to do something that was within my community, making a direct impact. And so, thankfully, uh, with the support of my parents and really just a lot of research and and passion for what I wanted to bring into the world, my mom and I co-founded the HAPPY organization, which stands for Healthy, Active, Positive, Purposeful Youth, in 2012, and we provide plant-based nutrition and culinary education to kids all across the country, most particularly in underserved communities. And getting to do this work is truly the most amazing thing. I have so much fun talking with kids and teaching them about how important it is for us young people to take control of our health and well-being and not be at the hands of our neighborhoods or our school lunches or even what our parents are feeding us, but to also be leaders in our families in that way. And getting to do this work through summer camps and school programs and school tours has been really, really awesome for the past five years and we're so excited about the future of what we're doing. Now, I think uh, my journey is a proud, I'm so proud to be an example of what happens when adults let young people into these spaces and validate their voices, and that's exactly what I'm really here to talk about today. I think the number one step is first inclusivity. If my mom hadn't thought, hey, maybe my kids should know why we're eating more vegetables than we used to before, then none of this really would have happened. She made sure that we were included in the conversation and understood that yes, type two diabetes is terrifying and something that can easily hurt your dad, but at the same time, we're going to tackle this with love and compassion and also be educated fully about this topic. And so being included in that conversation, while it was scary and sometimes adults like to shield us kids from scary things, it made me realize how important it is for me at an eight-year-old age or um, at any age to really take control of my health and to be aware of it and conscious of what I'm putting into my body. So if you're a teacher or an educator or a CEO of a food brand, include young people and their voices in this conversation. It is so important because it's a way that we can find new food leaders. Oftentimes we think that adults don't care about what we have to say, but if you do create this space and create a safe space, then it's more likely that you will find these food leaders who are passionate, but were once kind of shy to share their voices. And so having inclusivity is so, so important in this industry. And I'm so glad to have had that experience in all the spaces and to get men mentorship and to get community partners to believe in my voice just because I was a foodie who loved healthy eating and really wanted to spread that with my peers. Another thing that I find is super important is, of course, education. It's reaching out to those communities that are systematically predisposed to unhealthy lives. It's making sure that those kids, and of course all kids, but especially those communities that have literally fast food restaurants lined down the streets and no access to healthy foods, fruits and vegetables, to make sure that they are fully educated about what's going on in the food system, how they can potentially shift what's happening in their lives and in their communities through food as well. Being educated shapes 
how the food system will turn out in, in the future because we are able to make conscious choices about what we support, whether that's environmentally, ethically, and um, for health reasons as well. And so if young people are at a young age educated about food and the system, we'll be able to put our dollars towards what aligns with our values. And that is so important in terms of the future of food. So I just want to, again, thank you all so much for listening a bit to my story, but also for allowing youth spaces and voices to be a part of this conversation. It is so, so important and so valued, and I think intergenerational collaboration is the key to making a food system that is healthy and just and really created for all. So thank you so much.